Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. I'm back home from Dubai and things here are looking a little bit different. It is actually crazy early in the morning. It's just gone 6 a.m., which is not my idea of fun, but today is gonna be quite an exciting one. Now I've driven in in the Heritage RS, which we'll probably cover up very shortly, as you know, because we're gonna be getting started with the installation of the mezzanine today. Now, the Heritage RS is a brilliant daily, by the way. I should probably be driving that car a little bit more. Everything else is tucked into this far corner, as you probably know from the previous video, which at this moment in time, I haven't actually seen yet, but basically to make sure they're all protected and out the way for the work that is going to begin here. Now I've talked about this so much over the last, well, six months or so, where we've been trying to work through what we're going to do. And it all got so complicated and just over the top that we're approaching it step by step. And the first step is to install the mezzanine, the double deck, the upper layer, the viewing platform, the office space, however you want to call it, which means the work is starting today to install a second level in line with the flooring that you see here. Obviously, we have this plan to have the reception room. That will be just so when you come in, everything's a little bit more private. Then we have the big lounge area with the glass walls all the way around, looking through towards the halo space, sitting just here under the double deck. And then we have things like the kitchen, the toilet, storage, and the staircase over here to go upstairs to the second floor, which will be at the height of the purlin up here, which, yeah, so we're going to have enough of a second floor up there and um, a view, basically, over everything on this side. That's why we did the flags like this, only up to that point. That's why basically everything has kind of been prepared like this for quite a long time. So the mezzanine process over the next couple of days, which we'll share parts of, of course, is to get that double deck in place, to see the view from up there, and then it will be a case of approaching exactly what we're gonna do next. Now, I do know, because the guys have teased me a little bit with this one, while I was away, I was challenged as to whether I might have seen something. And if we come in here, and come take a look at the cabinets, Brad wasn't able to hide it. The r 124 has kind of joined my collection of model cars. Now, I do actually have a few more boxes of new model cars, which I might open up later on, get those in here. Need to get some more shelves though. So we need to custom order some uh, glass or acrylic or something to make sure we've got some extra shelves and some other pretty cool stuff for the Museum. So our task now is to drink some energy drinks to wake up, to go and get the forklift, the trucks are just about to arrive, to start unloading and getting everything in and work out how this day is going to go as we start with the mezzanine at the Schmuseum. Ooh, this is exciting. Truck coming all the way in. It's a big old truck. Don't think it's gonna fit the whole way in. But we can get at least majority of the way and we've obviously got some very large steel beams to take off. This is really exciting. I think this is probably the biggest truck. I don't think it's gonna fit all the way. Yeah, definitely not gonna fit. But that is a truck with all of the goodies that we need. Ready to start installing here. Forklifts in and ready. Let's get cracking. So quick plan, move the RS3 so that we're not risking anything. Electric forklift makes life much easier. Um, this was kept dirty just so we have one car ready to rock and roll. And Brad is doing a bit of a 10 point turn to maneuver it out and then move it over towards the other side. Don't knock over the scooter and in Mercedes. So that will go somewhere over this away so that it's completely out of the way. Obviously need to be sure that we're looking after everything safely with all of this, but can still get everything out. So we're going to keep a kind of channel to get all the cars out and through if we need to. I'm not sure which way he's going, but it will work out in the end. A few more bits still coming off the forklift. As I said, we obviously moved the Audi out of the way, but we're actually using an electric forklift, which is pretty cool. Last time we had a, I think Tom said it was a diesel. I said it's probably got a V8, um, but I believe it's a gas forklift truck. This time we've gone electric, we've got an electric forklift truck in, which is nice and quiet. It means we're not choking on any gases from the diesel, etc. And it's just nice and quiet moving. It does exactly the same job. I'm gonna make sure I'm nicely out of the way because these don't look very light. It's good progress already. Everything almost in. I don't know if there's one truck, two trucks, more things to come, but for now, this is uh, what we are dealing with. Well, this is happening really quite quickly. Everything's been unloaded. So we have a whole lot of steel and metal and everything. And one of the reasons we weren't able to do this further back in time was the price of materials was through the roof last year, shortages globally. And then over here, it's already happening. They put in the first uprights 
and then a support over the top. And it basically just goes up working bit by bit. So picture that, then put the one over there, then build the top, then build the frame, make a square, then extend it, then fill up the extra corners and then keep assembling the squares and along. I feel like this is gonna go up way quicker than we imagined. Like in my head, this should take a week, but I think it's like two or three days, basically. Um, and then it all gets fastened down, but it actually gets attached at the end because if anything needs to move even millimeters, you don't want an upright that's slightly skew if it needs to be obviously dead straight. And we're gonna have a mezzanine that high. I actually looking at that, I think it's really high. It's gonna be so cool standing up there looking over the garage. It's gonna be out of this world cool. Progress update. We've got some wood. This has just been delivered. Obviously for the flooring up top and the guys doing this were so honest and open with how all of this works. So we've measured basically what we're doing off the kind of size of the supplied wood. There's a time-lapse recording as well. Yep. As you can hear, it's very noisy. There's lots going on. There's trucks beeping, there's- But look at this. Drilling. The second side is already going up, which is crazy to see. I might just put my headphones back in and turn yeah. on when we get that noise cancellation. And the other thing that we've done is pull up all of this. Yep, the tape is now um, gone. Obviously, it's been very helpful having it as a guidance. There's a bit here. Did we miss that? Have or is we that... missed it or is it just... No, it's loose. It's there good. you go, good. Um, yeah, it's been very helpful having that as a guidance, really to just plan ourselves, as opposed to it being precise measurements of where the actual mezzanine is going, but to give us an idea in our heads of what this is going to look like and getting a feel for it, like when you've parked up with the RS3, leaving it in the halo space. Yep. That kind or of thing. Or my car and whatever, whatever other thing we want to put in there. Yeah. But the guys are really cracking on fast with this. It's cool to see. <laughs> really cool to see. I feel like by the end of today, we're going to have like... Something will be nearly there. Nearly the floor here. Maybe not the, what do you call it, um, actual floor itself, but we'll have the full shape of the mez yep. and where it's going to go. It's really exciting. It is quite exciting. It's obviously a big, let's say, expense, a big part of this. But um, It's just really going to transform the whole place. Like we said many times, they were the first part of museum transformation, the lifts being installed, and I'm sure we'll have some more of them in the future. As inevitably, there's probably more cars coming that we know about, yeah. or, or that we don't even know about that will just appear. There might be whole other things we haven't talked about yet, yeah. just to kind of drop a bit of a cliffhanger there. Um, more exciting plans. Oh, this is awesome, and obviously, because that is inside of the staircase, so the staircase comes up from the other end. Oh, yeah, so that's a much... On the outside of that and then the mez gets a bit wider as we come towards this end. Oh, that's awesome. It's it crazy to of... see the, the, the plans coming together of yeah. how we were told it's going to look yeah. and now seeing things being put in place. Like of... the um, overhang over the fire exit corridor. Yep. Um, yeah. It's like some giant Meccano set. Obviously the guys have actually made all the parts themselves, so the company doing this um, are responsible for manufacturing of everything and the installation, so they've made it how they know they're making it from the measurements that they took. Yeah, nice. One thing that we've not yet touched on, the paint samples. So Brad and Tom, you guys went over to Godlimans while I've been away to get some paint samples made up for what we're gonna do with the C63 Black Series. And we have a few options, one of which you were quite upset on, and so was Tom and myself, <laughs> which was Magma Beam. Yeah, so the idea had been to do it magma, well, I say the idea, we've kind of gravitated towards doing it magma beam because that's the launch color of the GT Black Series. And of course I painted the GT Black Series in the launch color of the C63 Black Series. So a bit of a fun inverse. And a few people thought that the guys doing this was a bit of a ruse because I'd already decided, well, truth be told, we weren't fixed on it. And now some chaos has been thrown into the mix because this looks really nice. We've complicated so, things. Yes, just a bit. So Green Hell Magno is a pretty famous AMG color from the AMG GTR. And there have been a few GTRs in the collection, the original one, the Pro, the Roadster, and in some form, the Black Series. But it's a Magno car. And I don't really like satin paints. Notice no satin painted cars in the collection at all. So I always had this idea to do gloss Green Hell. And I thought about doing that on the GTR Roadster, but didn't in the end, it was complicated with the fixed specs. The other one we have here is Electric Beam, which was originally the color used for the SLS E-Cell when they introduced that, but then used for the G500 4x4 squared. So again, famous Mercedes paint colors. Looking at this though, it's really nice. Should we go out into the sunshine though? We should, because we haven't seen it 
in natural sunlight. We had a cloudy day, so we yeah. couldn't see it. And, and um, unusually for the UK, it's actually sunny today. Yeah, so really sunny. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. Look just, at these. They just transform, don't they? They fully change in the so, sunlight. I knew what this would look like, and excuse the fact it's covered in fingerprints, because we've seen the GT Black series, we, we know that colour. It's a very um, bright colour, very vibrant colour, straight, bright orange magma beam. What I hadn't seen was what gloss green hell would look like in the sunlight. And that is awesome. I do love a good metallic paint. This is a really tough choice, <laughs> isn't it? This is a really tough choice. <laughs> Two completely different impacts for the car and two colors that we don't have very many cars of in those colors in the collection or i think green. with electric beam as well again a super bright color maybe something to look yeah. at in future electric cars. Ble electric beam is a color i'd love to let's say save for the future um having the soda beam yellow gt black series having the hethel yellow amira coming and with an intention of one day owning a yellow ferrari for sure i'm going to put the yellow to the side i think that's at least let's eliminate that and bring it down to two so it's going to be between these two Oh gosh, that's difficult. Now, the other question a lot of people asked is why aren't we going up to Chartwell for this? Chartwell is actually quite a long way from us. It's a lot of driving to get there and back. And the idea with the C63 Black Series here on the Museum is to be a little bit more local with it so we can share and be involved in more of the process. So it fits more naturally for this car. Nothing against Chartwell at all. They've done a fantastic job on the SLS and on the GT Black. And if I do another, let's say, respray on a half a million pound car or more, it's probably going to go there um, to have the work done. But for this, we're going to be doing it at Godlyman's. That's the plan at the moment. So, I'm going to arm and arm about this a little bit more. We're all three of us, I think. I can safely say completely split. We are really split. <laughs> I think we all thought Magma Beam, the green has thrown a massive spanner in the works and we all don't know what to do. More hours musing over colour choices are going to be needed. The craziest thing right now is that it's actually only half past nine in the morning. We wouldn't normally be here at this point, but we've already got basically half of the frame of the mezzanine up. We've done a few other things around the garage and I've unboxed all my new model cars. Now, as many of you know, the replicas are the one to 18 scale model cars in whatever colors are available, but eventually we make them all in the right colors to match the collection, um, which has been a very nerdy passion of mine for a long time. In fact, way back, it goes back almost 10 years ago, I started trying to accumulate all of these. But the ones up top are all the new ones. So we've got a 675 LT Spider, BMW M8, Taycan Turbo S, C63 Black Series, Hurricane STO, DBS, and the Lotus Amira, ready for the future. And all of these need to end up in the shelves and you have to be pretty delicate with these things. The quality on them is always amazing. Um, one to 18 scale, obviously this will need to be painted in Orion purple. It sits over here underneath the 12C and the 650S, in fact. Eventually, there'll be a GT8, but nobody makes a GT8 model. Nobody. So all I can get is a Vantage Coupe model and hopefully have a custom model uh, built on it. Um, the M8 is in, is it Satin Marina Bay Blue, maybe? Something like that. Um, we had Oxford Green on it. What happens here? So the GTR Pro goes where the R bath is. Then the SLS. Then we had this. <laughs> I think that literally came next. And then after that is the GTR Roadster. We don't have that yet. After the GTR Roadster is the Taycan. I know that one. This is like a real test of, do I remember? This is quite a heavy model. Obviously with the Mission E style wheels, <clears throat> which mine did actually have when I got it, but in white and my car was obviously done in the midnight green with the gold wheels. So we'll get those changed. What came after the Taycan? The Yaris. A Yaris model is in the works. That will come in the future. After the Yaris is the GT500, which is down there at the moment. After the GT500, 718 came in GT4. Don't have one of those. They only make the club sport race car for the time being. After the GT4 is the M3, which we'll imagine is there. No model of that yet. Then the GT Black Series. After the GT Black Series is the C63 Black Series. Although I have kind of missed the Vantage Roadster, but given we've got the Vantage Roadster from before, I'm not going to include it again. Same with the Clio. I'm not going to include the second Clio. So the C63 goes in next. After the C63, I think. Summer hit. Is it the STO? I think it's the STO. It's the STO for now, which is obviously the one I collected on the Shmi channel. Then after the STO, we have the RS3, that's coming. Then we have the Williams. Then we have the Lusso, I need to order a new Lusso. Then we have the DBS. Uh, the DBS goes down here. And then after the DBS will be the SF90. And then it will be either the Amira or the Zenvo. Getting somewhere. 
That's actually the most complete the collection has ever been of model cars. Only problem, we already need to go back to Ikea for another cabinet. We're adjusting <laughs> some parts of this. <laughs> no pressure. I've got kind of everyone watching me right now. <laughs> right. I think you stick to driving cars. I'm gonna to stick to driving cars, see you later. <laughs> the speed with which this is going up is insane to be completely honest, but I wanna show you something else. The guys have come with the truck, so the company is more storage limited, Spacemen, but check this out on their new truck, Mesmen. It couldn't be more perfect. In fact, if you know anything about the UK number plate system, the 22 has only just come in. So the first new 22 reg car I have seen is their truck, their brand new truck, which is kind of funky, which obviously has brought lots of the parts for this. We'll run through it in a little bit more detail later, but the progress is just mad. I never thought that the frame would go up so quickly. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but just to have seen this taking place as we have been envision envisioning it for a long time, it's good times, it's really good. Anyway, I quite like that touch, quite fun. The team have just set off for today but look at this, we have a mezzanine. Obviously there's a lot that still needs to be done. This is, I've said it already, something we've been thinking about for far too long, but starts to give a bit of a sense of where it's going. Obviously the uh, flooring up there is loosely in place. That's what's going to have to be done afterwards. But this starts to feel, I mean, this is like bigger than a London flat, the amount of space underneath here. And where you are is kind of the entrance room, which will be, let's say, to here, so you come into this room, and everything, when you're comparing it to the size of this whole space is tiny, but when you're actually standing in here, you're like, actually that's a like decent sized room. So you get then come through, there's a door here, and you come in, and the lounge room is all the way from where you are now, all the way to this upright here, that whole room. It's probably six or seven meters long, which is huge, that's perfect. This is then the halo space, this whole room, and we've had another idea for what to do here, because you'll come in, under the stairs. So the stairs will go up there. You'll come in through a door here to the kitchen. That's the kitchen. And then we can have this area walled off. And we were going to have just one toilet room under here, but we'll probably make it two, given we never know what we're gonna have with here in the future. So that can be, well, the entrance will be from the exit side underneath the cantilever, which will be a storage room up top. Obviously, we're gonna have all the cameras rejigged and all of that to fit the new layout and the new rooms. But the result of this is that that's our halo space. Now, there have been some more changes because you might spot the STO is now out. The STO was actually in the corner space at the bottom. Now, I tasked the guys with swapping them around because the STO is going to head out actually briefly, so that's being picked up shortly. But for the moment, given it's out and given we know, well, it's heading off in a minute, I think we should put it in the halo space to see what that looks like. So that's the plan right now. Not that key, that key, Lambo key, that would help. Let's shuffle this over there and get a feel for the size of that space. Another level of loud. This is so, so cool. Oh, wow. I, this whole build just starting is ridiculous. I think about there is probably good. Wow. And we've said it in previous videos, this is the perfect size so you can open the passenger door pretty much all the way. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yes, it's loud, we know. Sorry. <laughs> this door, I mean, might have hit a bit of glass if Tim swung it like that. But you can definitely go to 
lock number one or two, at least. Easily. More space than I expected. Now, on the other side, how is the room? I You're pretty much in the middle. Yeah, I was conscious of all of this stuff, which yes, of course. could pull it slightly more to that side. I think that works quite well. Not bad, I can say so myself. Now that's not all that's been going on here today because myself and Brad have been taking a look at our shutter. Now a few of you guys have noticed in the comments on previous occasions that there was a slight gap in the seal at the bottom. Just over this left hand side. Yes, which you can now see we've had a replacement seal delivered which myself and Brad have just fitted which actually wasn't the easiest thing in the world. You would assume it's quite easy but cutting it out was it's a bit quite, fiddly and then a yeah. precision exercise. But that's now done. And also, a huge problem with something like this is wind and noise. And you've now, probably heard it in previous videos, when the wind's yes. blowing, it's just banging along the shutter. So what we've done is we've tried to reduce this as much as possible. Now obviously only time will tell when we have a windy day again how successful we've been. But we've actually managed to get these brushes that just clip onto the edge of the shutter frame and then obviously hold that slightly more in place. Now all we can tell you is that when putting the shutter up and down, it's significantly more quiet with these in place. So fingers crossed, when the winds do pick up in future, this makes less noise and we can have a bit more quiet in here to talk to you guys and well, whatever else it is we're working on. So yeah, I think it's time to see what's next. I figured out what's next and we've got a bit of a funky camera angle in the RS3 going on, steering wheel kind of in front of me. Rear seats are down because we are on our way over to Whoops or Fix It to collect our Formula One wheel, which is now ready been transformed from the silver it was now to gloss black and all of the history on the inside of the wheel underneath where the tyre sits is has been retained so we've got all of that nice and safe and the wheel is ready to come back to this museum to help us replicate the original look of our Formula One car. Obviously we've got more wheels another three to give to the guys and challenge once again to try and get them perfect and while I'm here hence I've come in a fairly big car not brought the Abarth my rotiforms have been here for a refurb they're done as well so I've got to pick up four rotiforms one Formula One wheel, and then jump back on the road and head over to the Schmuseum. Meanwhile here, Tom's gonna to take the STO out. It's Lambo time. It's Lambo time. So Brad's off at the moment, as you guys no doubt know. Did you nearly drop the key? No. <laughs> you, you didn't drop the key, so life is all good. <laughs> That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yes, so trying to make some noise. goes off into the daylight for now. Touch quieter. Let's get loaded. I've made it to Watchville Fix It and this is so cool. First of all, just quickly, my four road forms for the Abarth, which are looking great. We've gone for pretty much exactly the same colour. They just had a few marks from a previous tyre fitter with a previous owner of them and a few small curb marks again from the previous owner, so I thought let's get them cleaned up. Maybe in summer, we go for something a bit bolder, um, but I need to figure out exactly what works for my car. Got the lug nut covers as well, which obviously sit on the center. But more importantly, we have this, our Formula One wheel with the history now finished in gloss black, and it looks so, so good. The guys have done an amazing job. I've been told it was pretty difficult to do. Um, it was a wet spray rather than powder coating in, a, in their sort of normal booths through, I think they call it the beast or the animal, I can't remember, but through their sort of whole powder coating machine. Um, it didn't go through that, it had a wet spray. It's been put in the oven and heated and it is looking insane. So I think now I'm gonna bag up mine into the tire bags, pop this on the passenger seat of the RS3 and head back to the barn. We are all locked and loaded. Rose forms in the back somehow. I don't know how I've managed to make them fit. And Formula One wheel in the passenger seat. That feels very strange, but really cool. But yeah, let's jump in and hit the road. I've made it back and I have the F1 wheel to show to the guys. Tom, Tim, where are you? In the nice warm office. Okay, I've got to find a way in. Ooh, hello. hello. Oh, Squeeze in. We have that F1 wheel. That looks cool. 
I'm going to give you that. Yeah, the guys have wow. done a very good job and it looks... So this was black. slightly damaged and silver and messy when I last saw it. Very flaky and And I've horrible. never seen this, that's the funny thing. You Ooh. haven't? It's the first time I've ever seen the like well, labelling. Welcome to the history <laughs> of the F1 wheel. Yeah, and the, uh, test. The, the made date and when it was tested. That's really cool actually. Yeah, I, I love the fact that the guys have been able to maintain the history for us because I was, obviously if they put it in the tank this was all gone so I was quite, you know, they had to keep it. We were it. very adamant and they've done a very good job of keeping it. And it's they still have. got the sort of original wear and tear of being inside a, a tyre yeah. on a Formula 1 car. The process of whatever removing. We discussed this last time when we took the tyre off, but this is actually older than him. Oh God! Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. But yes, it is older than me. Makes well, you feel old, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> because I mean, we were of conscious age by that time. We were watching these go around the track, yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. But Thank that you. looks awesome. Thank you to the Whoops boys. Yes. Mark Simon, Adam, Tony, huge thank you, everyone else, yeah. once again. And Stu for always. painting it. And Stu, yeah, um, and Kay, I'm sure Kay was involved somewhere, so thank you guys oh, to all of you. It. You um, be careful with that. Yeah, can you not? <laughs> I've, I've been, I have been, I have been told, do not damage it because they do not want it back. Okay. Well, there are three more to do, I heard. They do also know that there might be three more. <laughs> so what? don't do this. We'll take you off. take that. <laughs> yes. This is like when we don't touch the model cars. Yeah, you, Tim, don't, you don't touch, touch the that real wheel. car parts. I don't touch the F1 wheel. Yes. Do you okay. know what I can play with? When I was in Dubai, I had to pick up the full set of, this is what they make of the Dubai police little cars. They're like Hot Wheels. That's quite cool. Yeah. I mean, why not? This is what I'm like. I just see stuff. I think, oh, that could go on display. Have to have it. I think we're going to yes. have to put these in a line chasing the 1 to 64 scale Senna. That we have. <laughs> that, would, that sounds really that good. That would and actually we can be hilarious. Oh my god, we can actually play police chase. <laughs> Big kids. Do you know what's quite funny? I've just realised. Mustang got one of those. 605 LT got one of those. Panamera had a Taycan. Close enough. No. No. <laughs> you, no, you, no, no, you should no, be no, fuming. No, no, no. SLS got one of those. G Wagon had one of those, and we'll have another one oh. of those. Bentley. G Wagon. You've never had a Bentley. No. One day. Close enough. Not bad to buy police cars. They don't go in this cabinet, but they'll go in one of the display cabinets somewhere. I like how I just went from an F1 car wheel to like toy to buy yeah. police cars. Can we go and put this somewhere safe, please? <laughs> Currently it is safe. I'm not letting go of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're going to need to run this back up to TDF at some point, get the wheel, uh, sorry, the tyre put back on and get this mounted back on the car. And then we're going to have one odd wheel and yeah, I guess whoops are going to have to. Here we go. That's the outcome that we're trying to go for. Yeah. So we just need to replicate the yellow band, which is quite difficult. So it's around here. Yeah. So I think what we may do is get the tire fitted and maybe speak to our friends at Dub to see if they can assist with that one. But yeah. to come. rear, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, this is a rear. I like that it's actually the right like wheel design. Yeah. You would hope it is. You would. Hope, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm out. The efficiency of this build has been remarkable, truth be told. Obviously, there is quite a lot more. We have the most visual part of it in the sense that we have the main fabrication of the mezzanine itself. This has been a long time in the works. and You can probably tell from our excitement about a bunch of bits of steel here at this museum that it's quite a big deal to finally have it in. And it really is going to turn this into something more than just the barn. And we said that when the car lifts were installed, the Benpak Auto Stackers, because that made it feel a little bit more like somewhere to house cars. This makes it feel a little bit more like somewhere to house us, for us to be seated to enjoy. I mean, picture this as the lounge, right? Sitting in here, TV on, playing on a game, watching a race, whatever it might be, with that view out in here, it's going to be so good when it's all finished. That view down the left wall with all of the lifts, the view over to the right with all of the cars parked, staggered, you know, kind of diagonal and all over the place, museum style, playing on the Schmuseum, of course. This is like, this is a dream come true. And we've been talking about this for, well, since before I found this building. Remember, I found this building in a state of disarray, as I showed before, no concrete floor, no lighting. It was open, no shutters, just an old barn. And it took six months, eight months from there before we moved in. Then of course, it's taken a while to get everything sorted. But finally, this is happening. I think we're not going to be able to cover everything because it probably won't be thrilling to see all the rest being kind of bolted down until there is a staircase in place and we're able to go upstairs and see the view for the first time. And that's gonna be really quite cool. So stay tuned for that. 
very, very soon. And some other quite nice stuff I'd like to show you, all coming up in the next episode from here at the Shemitah Museum. But that's it for now. Until next time.